final evening of group play for the FIBA 2022 World Cup here in Sydney, Australia. You're, you're getting set for Serbia taking on France. No question this is a rivalry contest, but this one has a ton of implications on the line. Welcome inside the Sydney Superdome. I'm Despina Barton, my colleague for the evening, Lori Chizik, the former Australian assistant coach for the national team. Lori, these two teams, this is actually the second meeting in the FIBA World Cup competition, but today they have a lot of bad blood between these two. Well, Despina, before we actually start getting into talking about the game, let me set the scene for exactly how important this game is for not only France and Serbia, but for Australia as well. So for France, it's pretty simple. Just win this game and they will end up in second in Pool B and Australia will end in third. However, if Serbia win and Australia beat Japan, then Australia moves to top spot ahead of Canada and France would drop to fourth. The final scenario, which I think is highly unlikely, but still mathematically possible, is if Serbia beat France by 18 or more and Australia lose to Japan, Serbia would actually move to that coveted second spot and France and Australia to third and fourth. But basically for France, their destiny is in their own hands. So you take care of business today. You will not be slated to go up against either USA or China on the other side. That is who is waiting for you after the break on Wednesday in those quarterfinals. Well, that's why those top two spots are so important because they are tough to beat China or the USA. So these spots today, this game today, so, so important. When these two teams did meet last in the FIBA World Cup, it was in 2014. It was a seventh place contest and France won that game by the final score of 88-74. So a 14 point differential. Then they've seen each other back and forth through the Euro Leagues and beyond. So these two squaring up to determine at least somehow how that picture pans out for the rest of Group B, at least the group that is advancing. Everyone getting in their places here inside the Sydney Superdome, the site of the 2000 Summer Olympics. And before we jump in, we got to catch you up with the results here from Group B. So we see Canada and Mali are going to be tipping off. They just tipped off at 4 o'clock. We have Serbia, France here. And then the nightcap of the evening, Canada going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Japan, which, crazily enough, to see Japan on the bottom on the outskirts of this advancement group is pretty surprising. Well, it certainly was when we first came here. We thought perhaps they would be maybe even in medal contention. And now we'll get set with the national anthems and flag presentation first for the visiting team, France. The National Anthem of Serbia.
Couple thousand stand, uh, fans here in the stands inside the Sydney Superdome as the teams meet at midcourt to exchange their country's gifts with one another. A rich tradition here on the international basketball scene. And I just love that it's back post COVID. I think there will be a lot of fans from Australia that are here for the game after this, but they will be cheering on Serbia because that, that result certainly has implications for where the Australian Opals finish. And that's a look at the officiating crew for this evening. All smiles right now, but they have a very tall task of calling a clean contest here between these two rivals, France and Serbia. France slated as the visiting squad. They walk in with a record of three and one. They have won two in a row entering this contest. And this is the starting lineup they go with. Fotoops. Then we have Chateau, Michel, the captain, Gabby Williams, the star scorer. And then of course, rounding out the bunch, Betty Yang. And that's been a real steady starting lineup. That's the same starters for the previous four games. So they're set, they know what their roles are, they can come out strongly, and uh, a very, very settled starting lineup. And on the other side of the court for Serbia, they walk in with a record of two and two through group play. They drop contest to Canada and Australia, and this is the group they're gonna go with, Ratsa, Nojic, Topuzovic, Karanic, and then Georgievich. And I tell you what, Despina, they have had 11 different players have all started. And this starting lineup, again, is different to any of the previous ones. So certainly uh, Coach uh, Malkovich really likes to mix things up and, and just, you know, test the water, see what group can, can challenge against this strong French team and, uh, you know, bring out some other players off the bench. We'll get a final listen in here as Francis John M. E. Tupan gets his team ready to go. Well, one thing that Serbia is known to do and has done in the previous games is they really mix things up defensively. They're creative defensively. So that's a strength for Serbia, but it's something that France will have to be aware of. They'll have to show a lot of poise against any sort of different defenses that Serbia is, is throwing at them. The Serbia squad ranks fifth at the World Cup for assists. They move the ball really well. And you're looking at Marina Malkovich with her final comments. Ser um, Serbia need to really try and get on top of Williams early, try and limit her touches. She's the key for France, averaging 16 and a half points, five rebounds a game. If they can get on top of her and just try and make her a little frustrated early, that could go a long way in helping them towards a W. Who's got more of the will to win, right? Both teams have already sealed their positioning, at least in the top four for advancement reasons. Who's got more of the will to win, right? Both teams have already sealed their positioning, at least in the top four for advancement reasons. But does Serbia want to disrupt what France may think is a very winnable contest today? And one thing to note, too, for this Serbia squad, their captain, Tina Krajishnik, broke her nose in the final play against Mali yesterday. So when she does come out, she will be wearing some extra hardware to protect her face. And Williams starts with the ball for France. An open look here for Chateau and swooping up the rebound, Ratsa. We'll see which team settles first in this all important game. Kadanich saw a high low look intercepted by Chateau. Michel 
walks it up to the top of the key. A little bit of horns action here coming off of that. Working around the horn to Williams. Shot on the wing. It's a miss. And Serbia will push down court. That's a shot that Williams likes to take, and she was wide open on that. Ratsa throwing it at the feet. Two early turnovers for Serbia. Michelle, shot clock at seven. The feed intended for Betty Yin. Both teams look a little nervous out there, I have to say, Despina. Just some of the passes have gone astray, not really crisp, not really sharp in what their movements and passes have been. Michelle, hefty hand, picking pockets from Nogic. Couple turnovers and a steal going in the France column. Williams driving right. Squares up, easy bucket for Gabby Williams, the first one to get on the board. She's very comfortable doing that, driving in and, and, up, and containing that to, or, or absorbing that contact. And so now we see lots of pressure put on France. Steal on Serbia. Williams this time, no, misses the finish. Ratsa, corner, tries to get an easy nice. one, she does. That'll settle the nerves. Anytime you can knock down an open three from that baseline corner, you're set, you're ready to play. Otux with the ball. This one stays here. Now, this France squad is without Marine Johannes, their star, sitting out this competition with a thigh injury. Well, she got that injury at a, at a training just before the tournament started, so that was really unfortunate. But they've done a great job of, of adjusting, making those adjustments. Bidayin picks up the ball. And a win out on defense for Serbia. Great team defense by Serbia. Really got their rotations and put that pressure on. France had nowhere to go. Jovana Novikic goes baseline with the hook, the finish on the reverse. Welcome to the party, Jovana Novikic. No split line help to help her, te her teammate that had gotten beaten on baseline. Just a nice drive and very late help, nothing there. And you see Serbia here picking up the team three-quarter court. Marine Fotuks to Williams. She surveys. Michelle drives right, kicks it on the free throw line. Shotaru hits the shot. That's Michelle is so handy. At, uh, she's so smart. She's got a, such a good IQ. Can drive, see where her teammates are. Kadanich waiting for the screen. She drives right, gives it right back. Beautiful clean finish by Georgievich. That's exactly what they want to do. That pass was nice and high and good hands to catch that and finish. Williams up court. Michelle takes it in. Hook shot on the right. It is in. Eye for an eye. It's six all. Kofuzovic, just surveying things. A lot of pick and roll action. No get straight up on the left side and one falling away. What a great finish on, as you mentioned, that pick and roll action, that high pick and roll. Came off of it really strongly, just looking to see what was there. Fake that little pass, absorb the contact, strong finish. A 
Looks like that was Nojic's first free throw of the competition. Into trouble. Here comes the trap and the foul delivered, I think, by Torre. So that's something Serbia liked doing, throwing different looks on, especially after a made free throw. So there they extended the pressure. Soon as they got near the center line, they ran over to trap that. Force that turnover. Yvonne Anderson, a part of that trap. And you look at Serbia's captain, Tina Krajišnik, stepping on the floor. You gotta wonder if that extra face gear is gonna disrupt any of her game. Nice rebound, clean feed, finish, Ratsa. What an effort there by Maya Skorich. Great offensive rebound, just fighting for it. Got a hand, a little tap to her teammate. Five point lead for Serbia. Serbia on those on-ball screens are really coming out and trying to trap it. Hard, hard show by the big player, trying to be disruptive. But at the offensive end, wow, they are clicking together as a team. So Pajay comes in, she will inbound for France. Williams has the rock. Drives middle, draws three white jerseys, no problem. She's on the board, Gabby Williams. She's got some serious hops out there. She had some height on that shot. Anderson, trying to create a little space here on the wing. The feed goes into Tina, and Tina goes to work, Krajishnik. She certainly doesn't look intimidated with that, that nose guard on. That was a lovely move by her and strong. Williams on the right, the feed to Torre. Open look, top of the key, won't go down for France. Williams in there, making things a little bit more difficult for that rebound for Serbia. Pull up jumper, that's for three. It's a miss. And Williams will take the contact. I like the fact that France are trying to get out and run on those rebounds. Because Serbia are throwing some different defenses at them, so they want to push the ball and, and really be creative in what they do on the offensive end. Anderson here on Paget. Williams driving right, that one just mishandled. There, she wanted a kickball call. No gets right lane, lays it in. That's what you do when the lane is that wide open. It is, but give credit to Kryushnik because she was actually down early and drawing a defender. Tadic in trouble. Tries to throw something up and it's the captain, Tina. Get out of here. Ooh, Anderson. Gabby Williams just couldn't control her body as she went after that ball. We're gonna have a timeout called here with Serbia. They have a seven point lead. It's 15-8 after Six and a half minutes of play. So 
Lori, if you were France at this moment, what are you telling your team? Well, I think they have to show more poise out there. So, and they know that Serbia will throw different things at them, but they have to be strong with the ball, make some better passes. They're looking for their teammates, but they're just not executing really well. And defensively, well, they've got to make sure that they're blocking out and not giving them any second chance opportunities. And the second quarter is underway. Von Anderson feeds it up to Tina. She'll turn, spin, hook shot. It's off. Tussling in there for the rebound is her teammate Scorich. And it will stay. I think Rupert just had her foot on the line when she came down with the ball. So we see Serbia take the ball in the end line. So a fresh 14 second shot clock. Nogic to Anderson. Nobody coming at her, and she's going to make you pay. Yvonne Anderson from three. Well, she can shoot the three, Anderson. I'm not sure quite why she was left so wide open. Now, these teams have played five games in six days. Could it be any fatigue kicking in at this point of the tournament? Well, you would, you would think maybe, but you know what? This is a big game for both these teams. So, uh, you know, you can, it's a rest day tomorrow. <laughs> rest then, but um, I think the, the adrenaline would be kicking in and, and uh, I don't think fatigue would be a factor at this stage of this game. You would hope not. Scorch needing help. She's being smothered by Rupert. Anderson baseline, feeling it. She's got five. The lead creeping out to 12 now for Serbia. So again, mixing up their, their defense of Serbia. They're in a bit of a zone right now. Franz Tadic goes right to the glass. That was a nice basket by Tadic because she was being smothered by Serbian players. Anderson drives right. The hack comes from Torre and she'll get to shoot a pair on the free throw line. It's a nice look inside and as we said, strong finish between the tall arms of Serbia. But on the other end, what a great cut by by Anderson. She curled around. She recognized that her player was behind her, locking and trailing, so she curled into the key. Nice take to the basket. Finds herself at the foul line. Yvonne Anderson spent some time at the University of Texas in the States. Grew up in Arkansas. Went undrafted during the 2012 WNBA season and has found a prominent spot in Euro basketball. Straight away after that made foul shot, we see full court pressure from Serbia, trying to trap in the corner. France did a good job there of getting it over. And that's what France have to do. They have to know that those sort of things are coming. So they want to catch the ball in a better spot. Down in the corner there, it's very trappable. They were lucky to get out of that. So. Again, just show a bit of poise. Know that those things are going to come after foul shots and get yourself set up. So both teams with four fouls apiece. Next one, they're shooting at the free throw line. Little hot potato action that leads to Serbia now and transition. Anderson. Changing speeds, creates off the shot. Botooks to Rupert. Baseline shot, no good. Anderson looking down court, running with her is Krajishnik posting up. She calls for it. And they're going to say that she was the last one to touch that ball and go out of bounds. No foul. 
She's not taking a backward step, though, is she, with that uh, nose guard on, and it doesn't seem to be inhibiting her at all, her, her vision, her peripheral vision at all. Just over a minute to play here in the first quarter. Serbia up by 14. If you're just joining us, this is Group B play, the finale. And Group B and Gabby Williams now. She's so creative off that horns action. The ball's in her hand. She's probing. She's looking. She's seeing what's open. Going downhill. Tipped away. Gabby Williams on the receiving end. She's got eight points for France. Ivanovic. Turn and shoot is Tina. That's a miss. She goes in for her own rebound. And it's France who's smothering on defense. The kick out. Oh, they got out of jail there. They'll settle in and pull it out for the last 12 seconds here. Gabby Williams running the O. Then the shot. Shotaru. And wow. What a way to finish for France. The momentum going their way. That was a nice little play. Sent everybody flat except for Chatero. Drive. The defenders were all eyes on Williams. And then a nice little pass. And Chatero nailed that shot. Great way to end the quarter for France. It's Serbia still out in front, though, at the end of the first 10. 24-17. Look at the percentages here. Three-point percentage, 50% for, for Serbia, 25 for France. And that's something that's not a bad strategy for Serbia is to, to go into a little bit of a zone here and there because France as a team only shoot the three ball at 23%. So it's a, it's a good strategy. Serbia started this quarter on fire, really had an attacking mentality, a real scoring mentality. Really good, strong finish here. Great look inside, just a nice little pocket pass in there. And, and I thought Michelle had, a, had an influence on the game early, a couple of assists, a couple of shots. But really, Serbia had the momentum for most of that, that quarter. It was just near the end. Williams had a couple of nice baskets, and there we see how high she elevates in the air. This team for France is winning in the steals category right now, and they've been pouncing these last couple possessions. Well, Serbia already have eight turnovers in that one quarter, so that's something they really need to clean up. They're going to challenge this French team. They've got to be able to have a shot every single time down the floor. Anderson, the kick out, baseline jumper, in and out. Anderson's there for the putback. It's a miss. Gabby Williams and says, that's the end of that. Fotux. Driving left, the give off Seahawks foot. Turnover. Chado trying to pick up where she left off two nights ago. We get a Jovanovic attempt and Tina in the paint. Three attempts yes. and nothing Serbia is able to walk away with. That first shot by Chajo was a, a really quick release, very early in the shot clock. Futuk just brings the ball up, gets things organized, calls a play. Michelle. And Williams off the screen, the backdoor feed. Beautiful finish, Chateau. I think they've worked on that at training before. That uh, pass was on a string. 
to her teammate Chateau. And now France throwing us some different looks on defense here. And I think that's a good idea from both teams. You don't want the offense to get comfortable in anything. You want to make sure we see that lovely pass, that, that two-man game. But you want, you want the, the offense to have to sort of look and go, well, I need to run this. Oh, they're in a zone now. Well, we'll change to this. So, so just keep them thinking all the time. So Serbia had a 14-point lead that has dwindled now to five points. Jovanovic trying to space things back out. Really good push by Futuk so that they have to match up. They have to play early defense. Siak gives it back. Futuk's. Michelle spotted up. Three ball is in. That was right in front of our line of vision, and it never looked like missing. Anderson. Serbia working this ball around the horn, not looking there with Skorich. A miscommunication. Great shot by Michelle. Botux. Shot a row, gives it back. A look in from Sherry. She finishes with the left down the baseline right there, knocks this contest up. 24 all. That was just excellent execution by Team France. They got the ball through hands, used a high pick and roll, kicked it back, looked inside. Nice finish by Sherry. A timeout called by Serbia, and we're going to try and listen in. Well, I did get two points from that timeout, and one was no three-pointers. Why are you letting them get three-pointers? And the second was right at the end, block out. Don't give them any second chances. Could not have been clearer. Another look at that basket that tied things up. Kendra Sherry, the one to deliver that punch. She picks up Anderson. The kick out. Nogic. Works to the top of the key. The feed down low to Tina Krajisnik. And man, she looks on point. She made that reverse layup look so easy, but in fact, that was tough. Michelle sees the double team. Baseline cut by Sherry. Wasn't pretty, but four points now for Kendra Sherry. I'd have to say that the exact same play that they ran before the timeout was called. Tajo. Anderson open look on the baseline. Misses. Covered there by Michelle. Michelle is the captain of this France squad, 33 years old. The thing about Michelle is she's just really 
She's solid, she's trustworthy, she's not flashy, but she just keeps this team under control. Cha Jo. Serbia looking for some shooting power here. Had a ton of time on the shot clock. A skip pack, pass to Fotux, and nearly flailing away, she hits it. Well, Coach, Malkovich is not going to be happy. That's another three-point shot for France. Cha Joe, this time baseline. Good rebound by Tina. Second shot opportunity here for Serbia. Here comes the screen. Anderson gets stripped in her trek down the lane. Otooks. The Siak. Michelle drives, dishes out. Fotooks with the shot. It's off. And last touch by Serbia. I'm really impressed with uh, Michelle. I, I like what she's doing out there. I like what she's creating for her teammates. She's a real steadying influence for this France team. Foul away from the basket going against Serbia. Stankovic was right in front of the, the referees and really just grabbed her, her, her the offensive player and uh, wasn't letting her go anywhere. Ajay with a clean pass. Working around the horn, she gets it back, hits the three. Straight from the inbound, she gets in position. And France extends now their lead by six. Well, right now, France are shooting the three ball at 50%. Throughout their previous four games, it was 23%. So what a game to come alight from the three-point line. Chajo clears Paget. And we'll keep it here. Nogic with the extra effort. Spacing's not great right now for France, or sorry, for Serbia. They are all on the same side of the court, really making it crowded, really making it easy for the defense. Yvonne Anderson with the ball. Everyone in motion here. Stankovic. I feel like France have really upped the defensive pressure. They've taken it to another level. They're really being active hands, active feet, pressuring the ball at every opportunity. On the curl, Chajo. Again, keeping it alive, Stankovic. This one stripped away from her, Rupert. It is very much like France flipped a switch. It ah. is. Just getting warmed up, I, I guess. And an offensive foul here called against Rupert. It's going to be her first, the team's third. Well, I think it was uh, helped along a little bit by, um, you know, the reaction. That's okay. Good call. Not only are you a basketball player, but you certainly inhibit some, uh, I don't want to say acting skills, but certainly knowing your situation. <laughs> Comes in handy at times. Anderson just flying down the court. Reverse, reverse. She gets it.
Looking inside. Around the horn, better shot. Bo Tooks. It is physical out there. Bodies are flying. Both teams are really going after the O boards. Roxa, no problem here. And Serbia brings it back within two. This is this great reverse layup by Gabby Williams. Goes flying herself, but you can just see every opportunity, the physicality out there, the bodies flying. People are taking it, not taking a backward step, attacking each other, getting to the rim. And you know what I like, and, and I think it's happened most of the tournament, is the referees are really letting the players go. So France takes a timeout here to slow the roll of the Serbians. And I think the coach just really wanted to focus them for that last, he said, you know, two minutes, two and a half minutes. Give them instructions for that. So Marine Fautoux will bring the ball up for France. Little look by Chateau. She'll kick it out. Page. Torre with one second. Will they get it off? No. Shot clock violation. There was a lot of movement there, and Serbia did a good job of sticking to their defensive principles, handing off players when necessary. France really didn't have a look at the basket. And these two teams match up quite nicely size-wise. They're very comparable. Nogic, three. Wow. Hits it. That was a great release. She caught the ball, feet set. She does not need much time or space to get that shot off. Luper to Michelle. Against Serbia, keeping this team far away from the basket. This stays. No one boxing out Torre on the weak side block. Clock resets to 14, so France will have a time to, to run a good out of bounds play. Michelle with eight seconds on that shot clock. Forced to pull up her own shot. Middle of the lane, no go. Serbia looking for the outlet. This gets shaken up and it's a turnover. Spotted up, ready to let it fly. It's a miss though by Ruper. And France getting a third chance here. You can see that Serbia, other than Williams, the height, they can switch everything, and that's what they're doing right now. Anderson slip and sliding down the lane. The foul against Chateau and it is her second, the team's fourth. 35.7 seconds here left in the first half. Nogic calling the play. The pounce coming from Rupert. And that's going to be the team's fifth. That was really an unnecessary foul by Rupert. She was playing good defense. 
She was a long, Nogic was a long way from the basket. I'm not sure why she, she felt the need to foul that. And now, now she sees herself at the line. And Ruper steps off and in her place is Elena Siak. France will want to run the clock down on this last possession of the quarter, try and get one good shot up and not leave Serbia enough time to get anything at the other end. So two beautiful free throws there by Nogic. And Serbia has a three-point lead. Botuk's taking a tumble here. That's only Serbia's second team foul for this quarter. Michelle inbounding, looking for somebody to get this ball out to. It's taken away. Shot. Ratsa is going to hold it out. Good decision. Stankovic there for a screen. Show roll. Ratsa drives left. The miss. A putback. It drops. Katarina Zet. And Serbia takes back their lead. It's 37-32 after two quarters of play. They led by as many as 14, traded the lead back and forth here in the second, and now have five points to sit on. That was just their efforts at the end. You know, a couple of turnovers, some second chance opportunities, which they took advantage of. And now they see this lead that takes them into half time. But if we can look at some of these numbers here, free throws, 100% from Serbia, only five times, but France haven't even gone to the line yet. That means they're shooting well from the outside and, and not penetrating. Rebound, Serbia certainly out-rebounding France at this stage. Assists and steals, very similar. I love this. Look at Tina, their captain, taking some time just to sign an autograph for the Serbian fans. Now remember, both of these teams are advancing, but they're jockeying for position within that final Group B pool. I think when we're watching these replays, what, what you should be watching is, is the physicality of it, the, the way that players are, are absorbing, comp, uh, absorbing bumps, the way that bodies are flying on the floor. And the other thing I'm impressed with is France's three-point shooting, which they really aren't known for, and which certainly the Serbian coach uh, wasn't happy with at one of her timeouts, but talked about it. And I love that elevation of Williams. So steady, so strong. And Williams, who is usually a go-to scorer here, is doing a little bit of everything. Williams has eight points, two rebounds, three assists, all in 10 minutes of play. Both teams, the scores are spread amongst them equally. So, you know, we can see that it's team play. They're looking for the open player, looking for a shot that goes from a good shot to a great shot. It's just like this inside move to the captain. Yeah, Tina Krajishnik doesn't look like she missed a beat, and she's out there playing with a broken nose. I know, and it can't be easy. You know, she didn't have any time to really train or get used to that, uh, that protection on her nose, so she's doing a fabulous job right now. A rivalry between these two teams, France and Serbia. And they're playing like it out here today through the first 20 minutes. It is Serbia, though, that gets to walk into the break with a five-point lead. It's 37-32. Much more with halftime when we return.
Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands? It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. Ma, what she did? Wow, Austin, don't sleep on her. How about those hops by Gabby wow, Williams to come up with the, the steal? As she goes all the way. Highlight play, put that on the top ten because that is a steal out of the air and then right on the rim. We love it from Gabby Williams. Nice little skip and finish. Yeah, great job there by Dembele getting the start for Molly here in this second. Tolo. Backdoor cut, Steph, Steph, Talbot. One of the biggest baskets of this tournament by that woman right there. And what about the pass as well? And China takes it away. Li Mang, no look oh. pass, Gu Jin! That looks like they're having some fun. That is why Li Mang is one of the best players on this Chinese lineup. They are definitely back in this game. Let's see if they can dig down and get a stop. Anderson, tough make, and she sees her layup roll in while drawing the foul and is going to get to go to the free throw line. Good move and takes the hit here. Rebound, Han Shu. Yuan, the pass up. Wow, what a move. Wu Tong Tong. Wu Tong. Oh, she is doing it right now. She's putting on a show, but I love what she's doing defensively as well. She's staying connected to whatever player she's guarding. Really impressive. The tournament, so they get really well established roles. Izzy says, not in my house. <laughs> she almost hit that ball into the first row of fans. It's like a volleyball spike. Don't be Kim. Scanning. Four seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Pac has to take it in on a much taller Stewart. What a move! Cheech on Pac! On Stewart! Chad Stewart going all over the place. Korea finding ways to keep that scoreboard ticking over. They got their problems on the defensive end. says, get that out of here. And we're back inside the Sydney Superdome. Despina Barton alongside Lori Chizik. And it is halftime. Serbia up by five. And we're going to show you some of the top scores from the first half. Starting with Gabby Williams for France. Well, what I like about Gabby, or one of the things, is that she's actually known as a defensive specialist. She's so athletic. But tonight, she is showing us what she can do on that offensive end over and over and finding different ways to score. She's running the lanes. She's pulling up. She's even getting her teammates involved. She's shooting at a great percentage. Gabby Williams. And for Serbia on the other side, it is... Nogic here, Jovana Nogic with 12 points. Well, she's showing to me her versatility on offense. 
The way she can go, she can go right, she can go left, she can finish at the ring. She shot a three so far this game. But I love her attacking mentality. She's she's a big body. She's she They're down by uh, five points. They've got to bring it back if they want to end up in that top two position. And for France, yeah, they've had a, an up and down uh, journey here. In fact, they won big against uh, Australia, of course, in that opening night. Lost to Canada, beat Mali, which was pretty much a set victory. Uh, then Japan made it close, 67-53. And today they will look to come back and get their third in a row against a foe of theirs in Serbia. One of the things about France is that some of their, their, their score lines have been sort of 13, 14, 15, but they have kept teams. No team has scored 60 points or more against them. The highest score is 59. In fact, they average 57 points against them. So their defense is really what's held them in good stead in this tournament. And, you know, today they've held Serbia to 37. They're going to have to really lock in and be focused in this second half and bring that defensive pressure that they've brought in, in the previous four games. You're looking at Alexia. Alexia Chateau on your screen, seven points, a pair of assists. Perfect from the field. So maybe add its shooting power and scoring power to go along with Gabby Williams. Chateau was the French League MVP in 2020, so she brings a lot of experience, a lot of versatility, and she's showing it here in today's game. As for Serbia, here's a look at the game leaders in each category. Nokic, obviously, with points and assists. And then Tina Krajishnik, the captain, with five rebounds. She's so important, not only at the offensive end of being a target, but to be a, a, a defensively, to be a stopper in the middle, to change people's drives and shots when they come into the paint, protect the paint. And we cannot emphasize this enough while you're looking at Yvonne Anderson. Her teammate is out there playing with a broken nose. The strength of these women playing this sport at this level has been uncompromised. We have seen a very tough crew of women's basketballers 
here in Sydney, Australia. Well, these are the elite of the elite. This is the, the, the cream of the crop, and, and it's so wonderful to see. And, and Sydney, Australia have been very privileged to have this uh, tournament here, and, and I think it's great. The fans have been supporting it. And as we know today, probably a little extra span support for Serbia coming from the Australian fans because they know how important it is. If Serbia win, then they go into seventh, uh, second spot, which is what they all want to do. Three teams all clawing for that second spot in Group B. It really has been. It was nicknamed the Pool of Death when it was first drawn out. And, and you can see it's coming down to this game, the next game after where Australia plays Japan, to even determine what placings will, we know who's in the four, but not what order they're in the four. In fact, Lori, tell me if this is correct. If Serbia does win this game, Australia still needs to go out and defeat Japan to, to secure that second spot. Yes, they do. And, and But the big thing is, is if Serbia could actually win by 18, they could catapult into second spot. So whilst Australia want them to win, they don't want them to win by that much. <laughs> I feel like we're playing with some Vegas odds here. Exactly. <laughs> You gotta love it. And if you're looking at your screen right now, go ahead and scan over that QR code and download the World Cup app. You got some tremendous stories, behind the scenes footage, you name it. It's all up on that app. So Lori, gotta get a little precursor in here. What will be the determining factor between these two? this second half? Well, I think Serbia is going to continue to throw different defenses. And I know they did that against Belgium and really came, only lost to them by three points and it was really disruptive. So I think we'll see that this second half. They've got to rely on just throwing some things, making it be disruptive for France. And France just have to hold their nerve. They've got some great players out there. They've got to work together as a team. Continue looking inside as they just did there. Inside out, shot a row, miss. And now coming out in the second half, Krajishnik has taken off her, her facial guard. Oh, she has. So while we didn't think it was bothering her, it obviously, she felt it impacted her game somewhat. No gitch. Finds the lane, wow. and that's what she's been doing all contests long. Great little hesitation lift dribble. Got the defense out of their stance and then finished strongly on the left. Nogic with 14. Leads all scorers in this contest. Oh, repair. A little miscue. I think she was looking for Williams. They salvage it anyways. And it will stay. Last touch by Tobu Topuzovic. Another look at that beautiful take by Jovana Nogic. Waters parted. And a traveling call against Chateau. Am I reading that right, Lori? That was the call? Well, that's that was the signal. Okay, here we are. Game moves on. Tip away oh, by Williams. Nice steal, nice hands. Just got a fingertip to that pass, was in the passing lanes. That's what France want to continue to do. Be disruptive, be proactive on defense. Here we go, beautiful drive. We are looking at the captain, Krajishnik. Tina feels much better now that she's got rid of that nose wear. And you know who's in the stands scouting this game, right? Took a glance at halftime. USA behind us, Belgium behind us. I'm sure the rest of the teams have reps here in the stands. Making some notes on these two teams in front of us. Well, because certainly they know that they have their order picked. They know that uh, they're going to be one and two. China and USA are going to play three and four. They don't know which ones because they go into a pool 
which is a, a, a new initiative and it, fantastic. You don't know right till after the last game who you're going to be playing after your rest day. In fact, later tonight will be that drawing. Wow, what a feed from Fuchuks to Shadero. They counted that basket again. A good, strong power layup by Shatero. The six foot three, 24 year old makes it a three point play. Nogic, the hot hand here, and it continues. I would be keeping the ball in her hand as much as possible. She's really looking to have that scoring mentality and feels confident right now. Williams working off the screen, skips it all the way over to Fotux. Michelle waiting for it, top of the key, spots up, lets it fly, no. Anderson running. The kick out. Why not? Here we go. Better shot. Oh. <laughs> Little heat check moment. Hey, I think she's well and truly deserves to be able to shoot that shot. Just a quick release comes off that little pin down screen. So Serbia is still out in front this time by seven, just under three minutes of action played here in the second half. Fotuks in the corner, way off her mark. Anderson pushing things forward. Ah, Nogic tries to give it back to her better hands by Michel. Serbia doing a really good job of putting Putting pressure on the defense straight away, pushing the ball in transition. Seeing if France is ready to match up and ready to play. And Chajo will check in. Nogic will take a breather. And all that rust for number 17. She's got 17 points here today. Easy inbound to Anderson. Go to work, Ratsa. Better look from Topuzovic. Williams, pull up mid-range jumper, it's off. France recovers, Tadic. Chatero turns, shoots over two defenders. And I think they're going to call this against Krajishnik. Shratino just backed her player down. Looked to see where the defense was coming. Got her shot up pretty quickly, was fouled. Oh, look at that black eye. <laughs> Yikes. This is the fourth team foul for Serbia here in the third quarter. And so Alexia Shotaro will get to shoot a couple freebies. She hits the first. That brings up her 11th point, Chateau. Two for two. All right, you already see a different defensive look here from France after the made basket. Again, we talked about the referees letting these players play. France have gone to the line, they're three for three, 100%, and Serbia are five for five, 100%. So they're letting these players play. Tadic guarding Krajishnik. Anderson to inbound. He'll give it right back. Anderson head down, driving. Little extra space for Topuzovic and great rebound. Tina, the putback. Yeah. 
That is why she is the captain, and that is why she can do what she's doing out there. So impressive with a broken nose, thank you very much. France now down by seven. They once trailed by as many as 14 here today. If they win, if France can win, they will steal a top two position in Group B. Meanwhile, the outcomes are varied if Serbia wins and by how many. Chajo with the rock. Ooh, wow, oh, wow, Gabby Williams read that pass. I couldn't hear that whistle, but obviously everybody stopped. I think she just, just must have clipped Anderson when she was trying to go for that steal. It was a good read, a good anticipation. It just got her with her shoulder. That's the first foul for France this quarter. Third, third, um, third foul for Gabby Williams, so she takes the seat, and I'm sure it won't be for long. Cross shot clock here. Anderson to work up, pulls up on Sherry. It's a miss. Anderson decides to drive and dish. No, taken away. France running the other way. Got a row. Inside out. Working around the horn now. Tadic inside, that's the look they wanted. Chateau finishes. Great patience by France, just looking around, getting it around the perimeter, some inside movement, waiting till she had position. The nice feed. A bump here by Sarah Michelle. So two quick ones against France. That's a good finish. There were three Serbian players that had collapsed on her. Shatero. Some quick substitutions here as you saw Anderson sit down. Point guard right now would be Katarina Zetz for this Serbian squad, yep. and she will travel. Can't keep that foot down. And that was just the immense pressure that was put on her by Futuks, just forcing her. She didn't have anywhere to pass it to. Her teammates hadn't come and helped her, and she just slid that pivot foot. It's a bit of a grind right now. Nobody's finding any easy scoring options. Williams back on the floor for France. Playing with three fouls. Bochuks works off the screen, creates enough space, and doesn't even need the rebound. Nothing but net for Bochuks. Well, you know, she's an organizer of the team. She's a pass-first type player, but there, no problem nailing that three. Ratsa, couple dribbles. Off and we're running with Williams. A little added pressure, threads the needle Whoa. into Sherry. What a pass and finish. Sherry liked that. She was just lurking in the baseline there. Serbia lost vision of her. You could just see her at the back. This is a three-point shot from Futuks, but Sherry just lurking, as I said, in the back, and then a picture-perfect pass. Wow. That one cuts the lead to... It said two a second ago, but maybe this one knocks it up. Let's listen into the Serbia timeout. Hey, speed up the defense. It's the key. Come on, come on. We cannot play when we don't speed up the defense. Yakšu modrni, sjeti dole, prelopte. Znaš koga gađaju? Frontira je, postavi se dole. 
Well, we may not have been able to understand that entire time out, but Marina Malkovich, wow, you could tell the urgency in her voice and, and that she wanted to get her message across and making sure that her players understood exactly what was necessary. She is such an experienced coach. She's probably been in these situations many, many times. Um, and she will know what to do, and she's just imploring her players to find a way. All right, 3.27 to go in the third. It's knotted up at 46. Krajishnik splits the defenders. Turn, shoot, jumper, off. It's short. And Fotux brings up the ball for France. Sherry to Fotux, off the curl for three. Off back rim, Anderson tracks it. Calling for some help here. Right now on the court, we have three players from the under 17 World Cup from 2018. Fotu, Rupert, and Cherry all on the court together, silver medalists. What a great opportunity for these young players. And Anderson comes up big. A little mix of the young and the old on the floor now for Serbia. Some built-in chemistry from that youngster group for France. Not at this moment. Not at this moment. We were hoping that we could uh, make that comparison. Baseline jumper, it's a miss. Rots a great position on the weak side. They forgot about Ivana Ratsa and quickly Serbia retakes the, a lead. It's five points in their favor. Timeout here. France calling a timeout here. Let's go ahead and listen in. Got to give a shout out to our colleague, Shauna Thorburn. She's transcribing that conversation. Coach there, John Emi Dubon, really emphasizing the passing angles and making that a point of emphasis here moving forward. Minute 49 to go, third quarter. We've traded the leads. A handful of times here. Serbia jumped out to an early lead in this contest. 15-8, led by as many as 14. Michelle wants to cut that lead. It's a oh, miss, but great. what a hustle effort there by Fotux. Such an important offensive rebound at this stage of the game. Open look, Michelle, can she hit it? No! And Serbia gets bailed out. Great seal inside, deep seal, easy basket for Stankovic. She did the work early, she held her seal, was nice and deep, easy finish. Gabby Williams. A miss, Anderson swoops in for the rebound. Oh, 
40 seconds to play here in the third. Ratsa fouled. Shotaro delivers that foul. Ratsa did a great job of cutting hard on that baseline, using that baseline screen pin down to come off on that action, get the ball and then punch it in and foul. Anderson being guarded by Williams here. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Ratsa driving left, getting closer to the hoop. You gotta get something up, it's gonna expire. Thrusted near the hoop, Chajo. But a turnover here on that possession. Good opportunity now for France to bring that margin just a little bit closer, last shot of the quarter. Marine Fotoux will run the offense. Four seconds. She's going to take the shot. Fotoux. Glass is not friendly. And the quarter ends with Serbia out in front by seven. It's 53 46. Well, you'd have to say that that was really, it, it felt like Serbia's quarter at some stages, and then other times France really had their comeback, but free throws very even. Neither team have taken very much. Three-point shooting has gone cold for both teams, 24% and 25%. We have a look at some of the best plays of that quarter. My goodness, number 17, Nogit. She was on fire for what she was doing out there. I think she got about six points straight in a row, whatever she was doing. But we can see the very athletic Gabby Williams continuing to notch up points on the board for her team. A pretty wild stat here, Serbia. 16 turnovers to France's 14, but they're obviously out in front in this contest. What are they doing right that has enabled them to have this seven point cushion? Well, I think Serbia, I mean, it's it's a low scoring game and, and we know that France can put the, the brakes on defensively. And so Serbia really need to try and I think if they can push the ball a little bit, well, if either team in this last quarter can push the ball and get some easier baskets, some transition baskets, rather than grinding it out in the quarter court, which is really bit what's happened this so far, this game, then that would go a long way to securing that win that both of them desperately want. Marina Malkovich spending a last moment with her team. You gotta remember the Serbia team in the 2020 Olympics, they were in that bronze medal loss to France. So you talk about a rivalry, you talk about a lot of history between these two teams. It is not any more evident in the way that they are playing this final 10 minutes out. Don't go anywhere. Serbia up 53-46. And if you're just joining us, we're inside the Sydney Superdome. I'm Despina Barton alongside Lori Chiswick, the former assistant coach for the Australian national team. You're looking at Group B play. This is the final day of group play at the end of the evening after Australia and Japan go toe to toe. We will have the final pairings for the quarterfinals that will begin on Thursday. Well, if you look around the crowd right now, there's a lot of Australian fans have come early to watch this game because it impacts how the Opals will finish depending on the result of this game. Kriyishnik up strong. Foul delivered by Bediyin. Such an inside presence, Tina is, and, and she presents so well. She demands the ball. Her guards have to give it to her. She's so experienced and such great hands and finisher. Nine points for the captain who's playing out there with a broken nose. Ten now. Ten. 
And we can see Serbia, they're not playing it safe. They're getting up and in, full court pressure here. We have to remember at some point during this quarter, if Serbia continue to stretch out that lead, 18 is the magic number for them <laughs> to try and get that win. But it's the backbreaker for, for Australia at this point? Well, Australia would have to lose to Japan um, and Serbia win by 18. But you know what? Just as long as there's a mathematical chance, anything can happen. Ayishnik goes to work on a much smaller Betty Young. Streaking down the lane, won't drop for a shot a row. Just went off a few Serbia hands when they're trying to secure that rebound. So we see the French ball out of bounds. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Cutter comes in. Chaudero gives it right back to Futux. Four seconds, she's got to get something off. Futux taking as many steps as she possibly can towards the hoop, nothing. Anderson needing some help. Tina's there, turn, shoot, hook with the left, it's off. We're rolling with Gabby Williams the other way. What a crossover, Anderson shot off the elbow, very short for Francis Badeyan. Just don't feel like there's a sense of urgency in France right now to, to come up with, to be more disruptive defensively, to push the ball offensively. They're playing for a top two spot. Backdoor cut, misread there by Stankovic. A double double here. We got a point out here for Tina Krajishnik, the captain for Serbia. Her team out in front by nine. It's 55 46, 820 to play. Tadic. Gives it back, Fodjuk's on the run. Hits the corner, Williams. Loses the handle. Well, she had to really jump to get the ball in the first place, and then when she put it on the floor, just to lose that handle. This Serbian team has been quite a disruptor throughout the tournament. Only lost to Canada by seven. Beat Japan. Beautiful take. She'll head to the free throw line. Yvonne Anderson. But Serbia then lost to Australia by their largest deficit. Beat Mali. And here with an opportunity to close out against France for a higher seed in the final grouping. That was a great win against Japan, 69-64. That was a real battle out there. And I think initially nobody really expected that to, to be the result. And I, I'd have to say Japan's probably the surprise of the tournament in where they're finished and, or where they're not finished, put it that way. I had them podium, uh, being on the podium. Well, so <laughs> Yeah, well, I think when you come from silver medalists and we saw the style of play that, that Japan had, they moved the ball, they were crisp. I think they're settling into a, a new coach, um, probably haven't identified their style of play yet, or it's, it's, it's a slightly different. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people put them in the uh, top bracket there. They're also missing a few key players, those that were with them for the Asia Cup in which they beat China in that gold medal game. You talk a little bit about the luck that has to happen, right, for a team to, I mean, anybody but the Americans, you have to have luck on the health side of things, the chemistry side of things. Williams, driving kick, Sherry waits for it on the baseline, it's off. Loose ball picked up by Stankovic. Katanich. 
Her pass intercepted. We're rolling Kendra Sherry coast to coast. Serbia really can afford to, you know, the clock's sort of on their time right now. They can afford to that's not what they throw don't it want. away. Yeah, not do that sort of thing. They need to run some sets, make France play some defense. Hard take for Williams. No whistle, but the momentum riding for France right now. They close the lead in by a few. Serbia forced to take a timeout. It's 57 50. Much needed timeout by Marian Tamalkovic. Sorry, Marina Malkovic, get that first name right. Well, my take from that is she doesn't want them to not be aggressive. She wants them to be aggressive. Don't take a backward step right now. So, so you want it. There's a big difference between playing to win or playing not to lose. Right now, they're up by seven. They don't want to play. They don't want to, you know, protect this margin. They want to continue to be aggressive. Take care of the ball, she said. Just under seven minutes to play. Sherry picking up Anderson, nearly full court. Sherry was on Anderson earlier, we're just wearing her like a glove. She's not playing any help defense at all. What a block by Williams. Serbia gets it back, Nogic the hot hand today for the team. If you look, it's like they're playing four on four out there. This time got some action. Dragunov, Stankovic. Lots of time in this game. Williams nearly trouble, travels there with that handoff. Loses the handle. Picked up. France still has the ball. It's forced up. Hits the rim. And the captain, Tina, comes down with it. I think she took a little blow to the face. Rutsa. Stankovic. Anderson just out racing everybody. Shot goes up for Kalishnik. She hits the deck and maybe can catch a breather here at the free throw line. Nice finish, but on that last play, Williams recognized that they had switched and there was a mismatch on there, foot speed wise, so she was attacking it. Ryushnik out there playing with a broken nose. We saw in the first half with a face guard on. She took it off here these last two quarters. A double-double today and continuing to create some separation between Serbia and France. Ten-point advantage. Torre. Rupert. Botuk's trying to get an eye on something. She creates on her own to the right. She didn't see anything she liked. She said, watch out, I'm coming through. Exactly. Little bit of space there, and she took advantage of it. Kreishnik gets it to Nogic here. They'll call out a play. Ooh, a nice little hand check by Torre. 
Rebound! What a monster board pulled down by wow. Bayishnik. At this point of the game, what a crucial offensive rebound. Uh, that gives Serbia an extra 14 seconds to play with. And this one taken away on that drive. Both teams really locking in defensively. The shot clock is almost going down every single possession for both teams. France are standing still a little bit. They need to get a more movement. And Anderson will get dinged for a foul while guarding. We're sort of looking at each other going, you do it. No, I'll just stand. You know, they've got to have movement. They've got to keep running their structures, their, their actions at least. We see Shotaro coming back on the court, and we know that she's a big target, a big scoring threat. Torre. Skip pass here to Fotux. Five seconds on the shot clock. She's nowhere near the basket, has to pull up from deep, and she hits it! It doesn't oh matter! Oh my goodness! She was in the car park on that shot. Cuts the lead to five for France. Four minutes to go in this crucial game. Anderson right down the gut. Oh. It won't go. You can just sense, you can feel the tension in this stadium right now. So much riding on this game. Otoops with 11 points. Two assists, three rebounds, 29 minutes on the floor. And we talked so much about this rivalry between these two teams, the European stage and the international stage, and it continues again this evening with four minutes to play and a six-point ball game. Coach Marina Malkovic has coached this Serbian team into a great position tonight. Could be a momentum builder as the quarterfinals will be held on Thursday. Everybody gets off tomorrow. And Anderson hits two critical free throws. She's got 18 tonight to go along with five rebounds and five assists. Botuks. Torre with the rock. And waiting for somebody to do something here. Stankovic tried to cover that ball out of bounds. Regardless, Serbia with it. Three and a half minutes to play. Williams picks up Anderson. Serbia have some good ball movements or some good player movement. Nogic throwing up on the free throw line. No good. Stankovic sticks with it. No payout. France ball. One thing right now, I feel like France is, they're not, they're, they're a bit stagnant and their players are just going one on one. They need to try and get each other open by some screening action, some dribble penetration, kick it out. Just a bit more movement. There you go, a little high-low action. Williams, though, a miss from Rupert. That would have been nice. It would have. It would be necessary, but it was at least some good movement. Turning around here, Krajishnik will pull up the J from the free throw line. We're rolling with Fotux. Torre flashing, Williams driving left, a kick, and a foul here called against Anderson. That's gonna be Anderson's fourth. Can they afford to take her out here? 
I don't think so. <laughs> Two and a half minutes to go. You've just got to have all your guns on the floor. Whoever's been playing well, whoever's working it together as a team, keep them on the court. And France calls a timeout here. Their team down by seven. We're going to try and listen in. I'm going to rely on my colleague once again, Shona Thorburn, to maybe work on some translations for us. So a quick message from John M.E. Tupan for his France team that finds themselves down by seven. Two and a half to play. And a quick translation here. Thank you in the, in the message at the break. It was Coach Tupan talking about having a quick hitting option. And if they have nothing, go into a handoff situation on the offensive side of the board. So they need to score quick, Lori. Well, they do. They can't afford to, to use out that 24-second clock on every possession. So we see here a nice little high, ball, high pick and roll. Traishnik kind of got in the middle of that. That's what they want. That's They'll what they coach. they three from Absolutely. Michelle. Four-point game. Now I see some urgency from France. Chajo straight down the lane, a foul. She's shooting two. That's going to go against Sarah Michelle. Just the determination on Chajo's face, driving it in. That is the first point for Cha Jo tonight, which is hard to believe because she's been a scoring power for Serbia throughout the competition. Couldn't have come at a more crucial time, though, those few points. She hits them both. Serbia now really don't want to give France any options from the three-point line. Little high-low curl finish. Tadic. Quick five for France. That's what you call a quick hitter. That's exactly what the coach asked for in his timeout. And so Anderson back on the floor with this whistle. Her team with a four point lead. Nogic being guarded by Michelle. Here comes the trap. She escapes. Four seconds on the shot clock. Ratz has got to get it up. A miss. And another rebound from the captain. Tina just doing it all at a crucial time. Anderson came flaring for that pass. It will stay. Well, Tina Krajishnik keeping this ball with Serbia. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Anderson gets it in. Chajo will give it right back. Got to do something quick. Anderson, shoulders down, throws it up. Doesn't hit a thing. Not really sure that she was aware that there was only eight seconds on that shot clock. They should have got a better shot than that. Shot goes up here. A miss by Shutter Row. And a block, an offensive foul, excuse me, a defensive block against Tina Krajishnik. And she's holding her left knee. Put your hands together for both of those players. Tina Krajishnik and Maria Portugal. Unfortunate timing, and I don't know if that was really necessary.
Both players looked in a little bit of agony when they went on the fell on the floor there, but regardless of which way we see it, it's France's ball on the sideline. One minute to go, down by four. Williams, right at Tina, kicks it out. Michelle, has got to find help. Shot a row, hits it! Brings the game within two. Oh my goodness, every fan for Australia are on the edge of their seat. Every fan for France are on the end of their seat. Anderson surveying here. We'll drive in a little left. There comes the double. Shaw Joe throws it up. Oh, oh it's my goodness. goodness! For Serbia! Wow, what a Whoa. sigh of relief for this Serbia squad. Oh my goodness. Shaw clock ticking down, nowhere to go, puts it up and banks in a three. And of course, with 25.2 seconds left, France is taking a timeout. Another look here at this marvelous throw up by Sasha Chajo. She hadn't made a point all game, hit two free throws, and then that big three pointer here in the fourth quarter. Contested three pointer, too. Oh my goodness. And out of the timeout, John M.E. Tupan was just talking about similar idea with a quick hitter setting up a quick action shot as time continues to wind down. They get to advance the ball in this timeout. I think we'll look for a flare screen maybe for Chatero. Michelle to Williams. She'll take it from nearly mid-court. It's off. Tracked down by Michelle. Saved and held down. It's taken away. Serbia ball. The foul handed over by Fotuks and it's Tina Krajishnik on the free throw line. A chance to put a nail in the coffin. Well, especially if she makes this, this next one, seven points is beyond 10 seconds left. A miss. And a confusion with the call here by the officials on who touched this last. They'll huddle it up. The take a look and they're going to take a look and make sure they get this call correct with 9.6 seconds to go. You know, and a lot of people go, well, 9.6 seconds, down by six, you know, why bother? But, you, you know, crazier things have happened in this game of basketball where, where, you know, two threes have been put up and they could tie the game. Highly, highly unlikely. Um, See if we have another angle, maybe this one. Uh, is there another angle? Maybe is there a baseline angle? Okay, let's 
Let's go back to this first angle. Frame by frame. I have number six white touching it after blue. I agree. Okay, so we're gonna change the call. The ruling on the floor will be overturned. It will be France ball out of bounds with four, well, no shot clock now at 9.6. Great, thank you guys. All right, y'all heard the deliberation. It's gonna be France ball. They're saying this was last touch by Sasha Chajo of Serbia. 9.6 seconds to go. They're down by six. Williams. Okay. Eyes down court. Drives in quickly. Nothing there. And that's how this one finishes. Serbia hangs on to deliver the loss to France. Final score 68 62, and the crowd is loving this. Well, what this means is that the Opals now make sure that they finish in a top two spot, regardless of the result of their game, next game against uh, Japan. But how exciting, and we knew it would come down to the wire. We knew the rivalry between these two teams. And look at this, a hard fought win, so much emotion. These women have been playing against each other for years and years. And today it was just Serbia's time. Well, you know, both these teams will still be playing in, a, in two days time. They haven't been eliminated by any means, but it just means that they will now meet, either of them will meet China or Japan in that quarterfinal. That's right, this is just the end of group play here in the 2022 FIBA Women's World Cup. Serbia ends on a two-game win streak. Everybody gets tomorrow off, and then those quarterfinals will pick up on Thursday. Look at the final stats here, Lori. Well, both teams shooting identical, 51%. Three-point shooting, almost identical, 26 and 27, and free throws. That shows, that demonstrates the closeness of this game. Assists very equal. Steals went France way, but they just couldn't convert on them. Both teams had three players in double figures, spreading the scoring a little bit more than usual. It took everybody on the court and their efforts, their production for Serbia to pull out this victory today over a foe, a rival, France, and Nogic. She really got the party started early on the scoring and had 18 in the first half. She did, and I just felt like it was, there were momentum swings all game, and then it just became a bit of a grind, basket for basket. Serbia would get up by nine, France would make a comeback. And it was on some of these great plays, as you mentioned, from Nogic that really kept Serbia's nose in front of France for most of that second half. But there wasn't much in it. France continued to battle. We see the likes of Cherie finish, Sherry finishing inside. But wow, what a game. And what a game by Captain Tina Krajeshnik. Broken nose, took off her, her nose mask at halftime, got bumped around, and still was able to come up with some unbelievably great offensive rebounds at crucial times. I think, Lori, in this contest, we came in wondering who was more motivated to win. And we found out it only took us the full 40 minutes. Well, the rivalry certainly continues between these two teams. It just never stops. Look at the determination on Futuk's face there. That's what they were facing. That it was physical this game too. These two teams, we thought this was scrappy. They are moving on to the quarterfinals and they are in the bottom half of Group B, which means you are right. They will see either China or USA on Thursday. But what a way to close out the group play for Serbia. For Lori Chizik, 
and the entire FIBA broadcast crew. We're going to take one final look at that Group B scoreboard. Canada, Serbia, victorious. Next up, it's Australia and Japan. Canada sealing up that number one position. Ladies, take a breather. You've done all that you can for this evening. For Lori Chiswick and the entire FIBA broadcast crew, I'm Despina Barton. We say goodbye for now from the Sydney Superdome. Final score, Serbia 68, France 62. So you will start together yeah. and then turn? Yeah. Okay. So this first one's going to be a, a two.